Elon Musk's level of ambition is truly unmatched. His company, SpaceX, has just completed the second orbital flight of Starship, creating a milestone that no rocket has matched or even only existed in the dreams of competitors. But as those companies have yet to figure out how to surpass that feat, this CEO once again shakes the entire rocket industry by revealing the latest version of Starship, simply another powerful monster version. So, what does the next generation Starship look like? What advantages will the new changes bring to SpaceX? Stay tuned as we get into this and lots more in today's episode of Alpha Tech. Starship is a futuristic spacecraft designed to stack atop a towering super heavy rocket, forming the world's first fully reusable launch system. After undergoing many tests, Starship has been continuously refined and upgraded by SpaceX to become more and more comprehensive. It was already the largest and the most powerful rocket ever built. However, Elon Musk remains unsatisfied, and recently, he has revealed some of the boldest upgrades to create a new generation prototype called the Starship V2. Musk shared a photo of Starships inside the high bay, including S-28, S-29, S-30, and S-32, declaring four more Starships, the last of V1. This indicates that SpaceX will make changes to the Starship design and manufacture the next version of the vehicle in the near future. He also highlighted features of the new generation, stating, Version 2 of the Starship holds more propellant, reduces dry mass, and improves reliability. Although Elon Musk did not provide many details about the features of future Starship variants, based on his previous tweets, we can speculate on some possibilities for the new Starships. Future Starships may have three additional vacuum Raptor engines, and the spacecraft's size will be extended by at least 10 to 20 percent, as mentioned in Elon Musk's tweet in September this year. If the 20 percent longer development happens, then the stacked rocket will be 144 meters long. Adding 24 meters would be over 60 percent of the length of the Space Shuttle Orbiter, which was 37 meters long. The SpaceX Starship upper stage is 50 meters long. If this is made 20% longer, it would be 60 meters long. The space shuttle on the launch pad, with its external fuel tank and side boosters, was 56 meters tall. If the Starship payload area could be stretched by 10 meters, the payload volume would increase from 1,000 cubic meters to 1,800 cubic meters. If fuel in Starship increased, then the stretch payload volume might only increase to 1,400 cubic meters. Of course, increasing the length of the spacecraft implies the need to add more Raptor engines. The current spacecraft has six Raptors. Increasing the number of engines to nine with greater thrust will enhance the overall propulsion of the spaceship, allowing it to launch more payload into orbit. At stage separation close to vacuum, a stretched Starship with three sea-level optimized Raptors and six vacuum-optimized Raptors should produce at least 2,000 tons of thrust and possibly more than 2,250 tons, depending on engine performance. At that upper level of thrust, Starship, an upper stage, would be just 10% less powerful than the first stage of Falcon Heavy, the most powerful operational rocket in the world. Regardless of its thrust, dimensions, or weight, what matters most is how a stretched nine-engine Starship would impact that overall rocket's launch performance. If unofficial modelers are to be believed, the results are significant compared to a normal Starship with a six-engine upper stage and 33-engine booster, the stretch ship could theoretically boost the amount of payload the rocket can launch to low Earth orbit from about 150 tons to 220 tons or more, an almost 50% improvement than a shorter six-engine Starship. If those estimates are accurate, upgrading Starship with nine Raptors and stretching its tanks is a no-brainer. It might slow development and make all nine engine ships cost a substantial fraction more, but a 50% improvement in payload performance would significantly improve the efficiency of Starship's more ambitious Moon and Mars launch profiles, which require numerous orbital refuelings. A 50% payload increase would allow SpaceX to complete most refueling tasks more efficiently, quickly, and cheaply. Even if the upgrade plans mean that all Starships will be stretched and carry nine Raptors, Fully refueling the new Starship variant in LEO could require seven tanker launches instead of eight to ten. If SpaceX doesn't mind maintaining multiple distinct Starship variants, which appears to be the case, 
then ships that are exclusively dependent on refueling, Moon and Mars landers in particular, could stay at their current size, with around 1,200 tons of propellant storage and six Raptors. A fleet of upgraded starships could thus refuel their smaller siblings with just five to six tanker launches. However, there's a good chance that the extra mass required to stretch Starship around 5.5 meters or 4 tons is minor enough that SpaceX will stretch all Starship variants instead. The second generation Starship will also feature upgrades based on lessons learned from recent integrated flight tests and ground tests prior to launch. Expect improved and more secure welds in future Starship variants, with the possibility of super heavy rockets also receiving these design upgrades in the future. Currently, there are up to four starships in production at Starbase, including Ship 33 and 34, which are being prepared for assembly and could be among the first to receive the upgrades. Not only increasing the size, but Elon Musk also needs to upgrade the Raptor engines for these new generation starship prototypes. Elon Musk responded to a post about a Raptor engine video saying, I'm very excited about the next gen Raptor engine that's robust enough not to require a heat shield, will also have more thrust, higher ISP, and many other improvements. Indeed, in both recent flights, Starship has utilized exclusively the Raptor V2 engines that SpaceX describes as having more power and fewer parts, making the engine lighter compared to V1. SpaceX has consistently carried out significant upgrades and extensive ground tests not only to enhance reliability to replace the less reliable first-generation Raptors, but also to use it as a stepping stone towards a new engine generation, Raptor V3. Elon Musk revealed this version of Raptor with greater thrust, higher specific impulse, and various improvements compared to its predecessors. Notably, it'll be powerful enough to eliminate the need for a heat shield. In this context, the heat shield acts like the panels under the rocket vehicle's engines, protecting the engine components from heat when one of them explodes during testing or launch. However, they also contribute a significant weight for Starship to bear. Therefore, eliminating the heat shield will not only help the engine become more compact, but will also facilitate easier engine installation and faster large-scale production compared to previous versions. As the Raptor engine becomes lighter, the overall weight of Starship will also decrease. SpaceX conducted the first three tests of Raptor in May with its thrust achieving a record. Regarding the Raptor V3's increased power, let's compare it to the Saturn V, the rocket that propelled NASA Apollo astronauts to the lunar surface. It generated 7.6 million pounds of thrust. With 33 Raptor engines, Starship could surpass the Saturn V to become the world's most powerful rocket, even though one Raptor engine has less thrust than one F1 engine. However, Saturn V is no longer operational. NASA developed a new rocket called Space Launch System, which generates a maximum thrust of 8.8 .8 million pounds. NASA says the operational rocket exerted more power than any rocket ever when it lifted off in November 2022. But SpaceX's Starship and Super Heavy dethroned the SLS as soon as it reached space with its capability to generate 19.5 million pounds at liftoff. Besides, simplifying engines also makes manufacturing and repairing engines easier and more cost-effective. Like Elon Musk said, the best part is no part. To date, SpaceX has been able to produce a Raptor engine every 24 hours at a cost of only about a million per engine, or even 200,000 if it's mass-produced. They are designed to be reused up to 100 times. Those are crazy numbers that no aerospace company would dare to think of. Fast and cost-effective production, repair and refurbishment will be extremely important for SpaceX with faraway and expensive missions like colonizing Mars. Truly worth looking forward to this monster engine of Starship. SpaceX is sure to conduct more tests in the near future, and perhaps we can witness the immense power of this engine in the next orbital flight. In general, the specifics of the Starship's future development were not thoroughly analyzed. But Elon once stated, there's a tremendous bias against taking risks. Everyone is trying to optimize their ass covering. This means as long as even a 1% chance of risk remains, SpaceX is likely to find ways to develop an upgrade while striving for the highest possible level of reliability. SpaceX knows no bounds, only perseverance and relentless effort. More than a week after the second launch of Starship, CEO Elon Musk remains upbeat on X and is gearing up for another endeavor in the coming few weeks. The success, whenever and if it comes, will be a significant leap forward for SpaceX.
This has fueled the desire not only of explorers and entrepreneurs, but also of NASA astronomers as well. They have just declared things about Starship that will blow your mind. At dawn on November 18th in Texas, the giant beast Starship soared into the sky for the second time. This momentous event attracted thousands of people gathered around the area to cheer for Starship. As space flight fans and photographers around Boca Chica pointed their cameras to the skies to document the spectacle, Scott Ferguson of Astronomy Alive watched from much farther away with a different kind of instrument, a telescope. Ferguson captured an incredible view of Starship's upper stage as it exploded into suborbital space. Ferguson said, I had planned this shot for the last couple of years. This has demonstrated that the anticipation for Starship is not only among space enthusiasts like us, but even space agency professionals are eagerly looking forward to witnessing this spectacular launch. Once Starship can reliably fly, it has the potential to transform the space industry. Designed to carry up to 150 tons into orbit, more than six times the capacity of the Falcon 9, and thanks to its full reusability, it offers a much more cost-effective launch. Astronomers are now beginning to dream about what Starship could enable them to do, such as launching massive space telescopes or sending fleets of exploratory spacecraft to Mars simultaneously. Recently, a group of leading astronomers in the United States announced that NASA's next great wave of observations will harness the capabilities of new rockets like SpaceX's Starship. The availability of greater mass and volume capability at lower cost enlarges the design space, said Charles Lawrence, the chief scientist for astronomy and physics at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory. We want to take advantage of that. Lawrence's presentation dealt with the impact of large new launch vehicles on future astronomy missions. The presentation was given last week alongside Martin Elvis, an astronomer at the Harvard-Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics, and Sarah Seeger, an astrophysicist and planetary scientist at MIT. Lawrence, Elvis, and Seeger authored a paper earlier this year in the journal Physics Today discussing this topic. Astrophysics missions to space have always been tightly constrained by the capabilities of the launchers, which have not changed substantially in two decades. The three changes that Starship would bring are a much larger mass to orbit, much wider cargo bays, and no increase and potentially lowering the cost per launch. The first of things Starship can really do well is launch lots of stuff. This can enable the development of a standard telescope bus similar to those used by surveillance satellites to which custom instruments can be added. For decades, the maximum mass brought to low Earth orbit has been around 10 to 25 metric tons. The Starship User's Guide says that the spacecraft will be capable of carrying about 100 tons to low Earth orbit, which is 4 to 10 times more than other launchers. Starship will be able to put up to 21 tons into geostationary transfer orbit and about 18 into a Sun-Earth L2 Lagrange point orbit, a favorite location for many classes of astrophysics missions, including the JWST. Refueling in orbit is required for NASA's Lunar Starship Human Landing System. It could transport 100T observatories to the Moon, to the L2 orbit, or almost anywhere in the solar system. Space observatories are deployed from the cargo bay of the upper stage, known as the payload fairing of their respective launchers. They then fly independently for their operational lives, typically years to decades. All heavy lift vehicles launched this century have had interfering diameters of 4 to 5 meters. Starship will double that diameter to 8 meters and marginally increase the typical payload height. Over a few dozen Starship flights, a truly enormous spherical mirror section, perhaps a thousand meters in diameter, and with a focal length of 1,000 kilometers or so, can be assembled behind a free-flying sunshade, pointed in a direction of general interest. Most launchers cost more than $100 million to design and build. Exceptions are the Proton-M and Falcon 9 vehicles, which cost about $60 million but the production of Proton-M vehicles ended in 2022. The goal for Starship is to be cheaper than the Falcon 9 rocket. But even a launcher with zero costs would not be transformative without the large increases in payload mass and volume that Starship is designed to provide. A $60 million launch cost for NASA's medium-class Explorer missions, for example, is 20% of the mission's $300 million budget. 
It is precisely because of these unique capabilities of Starship that astronomers can design their missions using simpler, heavier components with fewer exotic materials while incorporating stronger technical advantages. This has been clearly demonstrated in the development of previous missions. During the design phase of NASA's modest-sized spectrophotometer for the history of the universe, Epoch of Reionization, and ISIS Explorer, or SphereX, for example, engineers used the mass available on the SpaceX Falcon 9 launch vehicle to help solve problems and contain costs. The JWST exemplifies the difficulties caused by tight size and mass constraints. The Ariane 5 launch vehicle constrained the total payload mass to 6.2 tons. The JWST primary mirrors, including their support structure, are one-sixth of the total mission mass. That's similar to the Hubble mirror, but with nearly six times the area. A Hubble-style mirror for the JWST would have had a mass of almost five tons or three-quarters of the total available payload. The limitations of the launcher capabilities forced project scientists to develop novel, lightweight, high stiffness to mass technologies. Their choice of beryllium for the mirror material was driven in part by the need for high conductivity to minimize thermal gradients at the 20 to 55 K operating temperatures of the JWST. The need to deploy a large, thin sunshield had other consequences, including reducing slew rates and lengthening settling times, both of which have reduced the amount of scientific work that can be done each day. Even though the JWST successfully deployed, vindicating the technical approach, the complexity of the design required extensive planning and testing that added to the cost and lengthened the project's schedule. With Starship's large fairing diameter and volume, the 6.5-meter JWST primary mirror could have been made of just a single component with a mass per square meter similar to Hubble. At 5 tons, the JWST would still have been only 10% of the mass deliverable to the Sun-Earth L2 orbit and therefore not a dominant design consideration. A single mirror avoids the complexity of aligning the 18 hexagonal mirror segments. Not all such origami deployments would be avoided by using Starship. The JWST sunshield is still larger than Starship's proposed fairing size. Although ambitious, Reducing total mission costs by a factor of two is the crucial threshold for cost savings. The same budget can then fund twice as many missions, which would be transformative for the new Great Observatories program by potentially allowing for missions slated for the 2040s to happen in the 2030s. Starship seems poised to provide faster and more cost-effective launch capabilities. Mission teams are likely to prioritize allocating their entire available budget, no matter how large, to larger and more versatile observatories. With the rapid development pace of SpaceX in just one to two years, Starship is expected to be fully proven in terms of reliability. This timeline offers NASA an opportunity to prepare for a new era of launch capabilities by the Astro 2020 midterm review. Coordinated studies over the coming years can explore how Starship might accelerate and expand the Astro 2020 program. But even if Starship were to fail, the effort invested in planning for its success is minor compared to the potential benefits it could bring to astronomy. Anyway, there are also plenty of grounds for excitement regarding what Starship could do if successful. From the inner to the outer solar system and possibly beyond, it may well open up a whole new era of space science. That's all for today's episode. We hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Please let us know what you think in the comments section below. Your feedback's very important to us and helps us make better videos for you. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time.